of the way through this countdown and now it's time to start week three. We've had top 10 race starts, we've had top 10 pit stop runners. Now let's focus on those more intense and sometimes shocking and amazing runners. And <coughs> let's spare a thought for those cars that didn't make it out in one piece of Some went out in flames, some just fell apart, among other things. This week, we're talking about top 10 one crashes. Now the crashes can be the most unexpected moments of the race and I've witnessed many a crash over the years be it from the race starts or what happened with pit stop blunders but for this I'm focusing on me on just the crashes that happened on the track themselves so let's get the usual honorable mention out of the way and this week it's Monaco 2004 <laughs> The sixth race of the season, Michael Schumacher, five wins out of five, chasing win number six. And this had not one, but two spectacular crashes. We had Takuma Sato with a spectacular engine failure that just clouded the entire straight, resulting in multiple cars being caught out and therefore out of the race, one even went, one even went uh, upside down. But the most prolific crash of that race wasn't the Takuma Sato incident. It was spectacularly behind the safety car. There was another crash beforehand where you had Ralph Schumacher taking Fernando Alonso out of the race. This, this makes it the hat trick. Michael Schumacher somehow crashing while out of the safety car and ends up out of the Grand Prix. The race was eventually won by Jarno Trulli, his only win of his career. The Renault team, preventing Jensen Button once again from reaching the top step of the podium. It was Jensen's fourth podium finish of the season, but he couldn't quite make the top step. Would he finally manage to get his race win? We'll wait and see. Something I forgot to mention uh, at the start of this video. Yep, the shades are back, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be seeing a lot more of these over the course of the year. So anyway, on to the countdown with number 10. 
think about the 2004 season and it's USA 2004. And this crash involved Ralph Schumacher. What else about that? Honourable mention to the list, and he ends up starting off the top ten. He ended up with a massive crash coming out of the final corner of the Indianapolis circuit. Uh, sadly, he ended up with some injuries that sidelined him for a majority of the remainder of the season. Thankfully, he managed to get back into the car and was okay. Well, when he when he did it, when he managed to when he managed his full recovery, and so here we are. He was with Williams and ended up not being able to finish the race because of this crash. He would end up having a crash on the same corner the following year. But that's for a future top 10. Not another top 10 crashes, but for a different topic altogether. <music> Sticking with the 2004 season now, and we are off to Hockenheim. And my goodness me, what a crash this was. Uh, yeah, Kimi Raikkonen not having a good track record at Hockenheim, and this was one of the scarier incidents we saw, chasing down Michael Schumacher for the lead, when out of the blue, his rear wing just flies off causing Raikkonen to just lose control of the car, crash into the barrier. Schumacher would then go on to win the race with Jensen Button in second place, who, bearing in mind, started outside the top 10 thanks to an engine penalty, which at the time carried a 10-place grid penalty if you had to change your engine during the weekend. But at the end of the day, What a huge crash for Raikkonen. Thankfully, managed to get out unscathed. <laughs> Germany 1999. Michael Schumacher out through injury at this point in the season. Eddie Irvine managing to take his second win in a row as he chased down the championship. Now, what could the crash be, I hear you ask? Well, look no further than two-time Formula One world champion, world champion in 99, Mika Hakkinen. A tyre failure on lap 25, which allowed Heinz Harold Frensen to finish on the podium in his home Grand Prix. It's a very rare achievement to be able to finish on the podium, get pole position, or even win the race at your home Grand Prix. It's very rare you manage to do that. But when you do, it's always a very special moment. But Mika Hakkinen's tyre failure on lap 25 ended up causing him to leave the race. Sticking with the 1999 season for uh, uh, for this entry next, and it's Canada 1999. And for the avid Formula One fan, you all know what's going to be talked about here. The moment the final chicane received an infamous name in the Formula One community. Not just in the F1 community, but even with the pundits and commentators and hosts as well. Three drivers crashing at the final chicane into the wall on the main street. And those 
and those people were Michael Schumacher, Damien Hill, and Jack Wielder. Three former world champions. Jack Villeneuve in 1997, Michael Schumacher in 94 and 95 at the time, and Damon Hill in 1996. Four world titles between them over that period before Mika Hakkinen took over for 98 and 99. Now what makes this a special entry on this list. I mean, I had to include it. Three Formula World, three former world champions crashing out at the final chicane on the circuit. And that's where the circuit and that corner and that wall in particular gained the infamous name, the Wall of Champions. Third entry in a row from the 1999 season and we had a spectacular start which may have been, which based on what I'm about to describe, let me know in the comments, should this be part of the top 10 race starts in the future? Who knows? But nevertheless, it's the 1999 European Grand Prix. And it was thanks to a delayed start and an electrical failure, spectacularly. So this is the... So this is the sequence of events. Alessandro Zanardi and Marc Genet lined up out of sequence on the grid, causing an aborted start and instating another formation lap. And at the start, the top five qualifiers and another car jumped to the start. Interestingly not penalised due to the abort aborted start. And then from there the race finally got underway. Heinz Howard Frensen leading from Mika Hakkinen. But further down the field Trouble at the first corner. Now what happened here I hear you ask? Well, Damon Hill suffered an electrical failure in the middle of the pack, causing Alexandra Wurtz to swerve into, Pe into Pedro Diniz, sending the Salva into a barrel roll. Safety car deployed and thankfully Diniz managed to get out of his car uninjured. A very lucky break and a fortunate end result for this was the fact that the Salva's roll bar had failed when it hit the ground. Again, thankfully, Diniz managed to get out of the car unscathed, but my word. Again, because of this, let me know in the comments if you think this should be part of the top 10 race starts should I decide to redo the list at a later date. And now on to the more well-known crashes. Some spectacular, some scary, but they're all eligible for the list regardless. So, Australia 1996, the first time the race was held at the Albert Park circuit after the 1995 season finished in Australia. And what a spectacular crash this was. Again, thankfully getting out unscathed. But it was Martin Brundle on this occasion who is now a commentator for Sky Sports. What happened here was he ended up making light contact with Pedro Diniz, which spun Brundle off the track. But 
My goodness me. That was the, that was the restart. Martin Brundle was behind David Coulthard and Johnny Herbert. Johnny Herbert braked heavily. Martin Brundle was behind and was unable to slow down sufficiently, hitting hitting Herbert and Coulthard's cars, launched into a barrel roll and ending up in the sand pit at turn three. And the scary thing about it was the car split in two. Thankfully, Martin got out unscathed. And the race had to be halted in order for the damage to be clear. In the end, it was Damon Hill who took the race win. And that would be the start of his race for the title in 1996. Twenty years later, at the very same circuit, we would have another turn three crash, which again would result in another barrel roll, but again, the driver getting out unscathed. Australia, 2016. Fernando Alonso and Esteban Gutierrez. Alonso crashing into the back of Gutierrez's car on lap 17, causing a barrel roll. And amazingly, Alonso getting out pretty much unscathed. He only had minor injuries, but he was able to walk away regardless. And I can only imagine people were talking about this incident thinking, wait a minute, the same thing happened 20 years ago. That's why I, that's why I ranked them the way they, that's why I ranked these two the way I did. One of the first, this was one of the first major crashes that I witnessed, minus the race starts. One of the first major crashes I actually witnessed happening on the track. Belgium, 2001. A crash that saw the race distance reduced from 44 laps to 36. Because the race ended up hitting its two hour time limit. The crash in question. Luciano Berti crashing into a tyre barrier at Blanchemont, following a collision with Eddie Irvine. And... Michael Schumacher also took Alan Prost's record of 51 Grand Prix victories, putting him in the lead for most F1 wins of all time. Michael Schumacher made it 52 wins that day, but this race, for me, will be remembered for the crash regarding Luciano Berti and Eddie Irvine. At the time I didn't see the crash live as it happened, but I saw it the very next day. And my word, it was a scary one. The reason I didn't see the crash was because at the time, it was England versus Germany. So take a guess at what was uh, higher up on the priority list. England versus Germany at the World Cup. But here, the European Grand Prix 2010 at the Valencia street circuit. Part of me misses that street circuit. 
We do have another street circuit in the form of Badger, but more on that potentially later on in the list. Anyway, the European Grand Prix 2010. What, an, what a crash this was. Mark Webber crashing into the back of a catering of his Golden Lion and Mark Webber's car soared into the air and thankfully he got out unscathed. One plus note we can take away from this is that with the team Mark Webber was at at the time, Red Bull certainly gave him wings on that day. Just a shame we're not allowed to use that slogan with Red Bull anymore. Because it's a ridiculous lawsuit. But anyway, on that day, Red Bull certainly gave Mark Webber his wings. So there we go. That's your top 10 so far. But before we get to the number one, it's time to get into the recap of the list so far. The only one mentioned for this list the 2004 Monaco Grand Prix. Number 10, USA 2004. Number 9, Germany 2004. Number 8, Germany 1999. Number 7, Canada 1999. Number 6, the European Grand Prix of 1999. Number 5, Australia 1996. Number 4, Australia 2016. Number 3, Belgium 2001. And number 2, the 2010 European Grand Prix. Now, what crash could top everything that's happened on the list so far? Well, this is probably the scariest crash in Formula One history, in my opinion. Here it is, my number one Formula One crash of all time. Now, it would be too easy to put the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix on the list, but out of respect for the legacy of Ayrton Senna, I'm not going to do that because it just wouldn't feel right. Because that crash resulted in a fatality. But that wasn't the only fatality of the weekend. Roland Ratzenberger sadly died from a crash during qualifying on the Saturday. Rubens Barrichello on the Friday ended up with a crash during free practice, ruling him out of the race for the weekend. But for this one, we're going all the way back to 1976. The German Grand Prix at the Nürburgring. Now at the time, it was the 14 mile circuit. 147 corners. Jackie Stewart famously called it the Green Hell. And it's easy to see why. This was the site of one of the most infamous incidents in Formula One history. James Hunt and Nicky Lauda starting on wet tyres on a drying track. And given how long the track was, who knew if that was going to pay off? Turns out it didn't. Hunt, Louder, among many others, ended up coming in to change their tyres after the first lap. James Hunt managed to get away without much problem. But Louder lost time as a result of the pit stop mayhem. He ended up trying to chase Hunt down, resulting in Louder suffering a near fatal crash. And I say near fatal because after his crash, his car went into flames. One of the cars, can't remember which one, ended up 
crashing into Louder. And Louder was stuck in that car for about a minute. The car was getting hotter and hotter all the time. And people were worried that the car could have exploded at any point. But thankfully, several brave drivers managed to pull him away from the car. They got him out and they got him as far away from the car as possible. But Lauda wasn't expected to live through this incident. He suffered severe burns to his face and a lot of smoke inhalation. But the incredible thing about this is that Nicky Lauda not only survived this, but was at Monza six weeks later to continue hunting down the championship, which would go all the way to the final race of the season. If you haven't seen it already, I would highly recommend going to see Rush, Chris Hemsworth and Daniel Brühl as James Hunt and Nicky Lauda respectively. This is a very incredible uh, dramatization of the rivalry they shared during that season and the way the crash played out on screen when I first watched it was incredible. It was really well put together. It's one of the best sports films I have ever seen. And like I said, it is one I would highly recommend. So for the purposes of this list, my number one crash of all time is the 1976 German Grand Prix at the Nürburgring. And that is your top 10 for this week, folks. Next week, we go back a day for qualifying. Top 10 pole positions next week. Are there any crashes that I missed out? Are there any races that had crashes that I missed? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. And until next week, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye for now.